Okay. Start. Okay. Morning. Yeah, morning. My name is Asha Cambon, and I'm pleased to be here interviewing Hazel Brown. Hazel, um, the first question I really want to ask you. I remembered sitting in at your brother's funeral and the eulogy that was presented about your brother. And what struck me there was that, I mean, he was an amazing union organizer and activist. And I said, when I'm listening, I said, I know this person, this is Hazel Brown. So I want to know what in your early life seemed to have led and inspired right. such a, a life. First of all, I think um, I am, one of my earliest and best mentors have been my father and my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And that was where the business about a commitment to community organizing came from. My grandfather was a butlerite in the member of the lodge, a member of the Moravian church elders. Mm -hmm. And always in our house were people like um, Quentin O'Connor uh -huh. and the, 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 the laborites labor around, around that time. And I would always be listening yes. to these old men. <laughs> well, they, they were old to me, um, talking about my father as well, came from a Antiguan family of organizing. In fact, one of the things I have to do soon is to replicate a diary that my great-grandfather did mm -hmm. to commemorate um, emancipation in, in Antigua. Yeah. So, so I was brought up in that kind of environment with a father who insisted that I could speak. I remember the first book my father brought for me was a book of magazine. I was three years old mm -hmm. and it was called Chatterbox. <laughs> and he said, that's you. Because we were encouraged to, to speak. My father also had come back from the war, from the, he was an RAF, um, served mm -hmm. in the RAF, and one of the things he brought back was a Grundig radio. Mm -hmm. So we would be listening, mm -hmm. this is before the television, to the stories on the, uh, the world news and mm -hmm. things that were happening all over the world and how people, in fact, were organizing to deal with what happened mm -hmm. after the war. Right. So that all of that is in my head. Yes, of course. Of course, the other thing that brought me to um, a, a political awareness was when I was 10 years old, I won a government exhibition. I was the first child from Gloucester Lodge Moravian to have sat the exam and, won, and, and got the exhibition. At that time, the government paid for 100 children in Trinidad and Tobago. But I was 101. The, 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 after the 100, the Port of Spain City Council mm -hmm. paid for <coughs> the education of the children from the city mm -hmm. who, had, who had come up at the top. So I got the Port of Spain City Council exhibition. And what that required was that I had to take my report book mm -hmm. to, in order to get the $24 check from Oscar Blenman, who was the city clerk for them to approve it. That means I had to meet with the city clerk and the mayor. Mm -hmm. I was ten, I'm 10 years old. Wow. <laughs> and, and I used to go to council meetings. Mm -hmm. So I knew about what was happening in Port of Spain from a political point of view since I was 10 years old. Wow, wow. Hmm. Amazing, amazing. Hazel, tell us a little about, because people don't, I don't think everybody knows you. Uh, how many children you have, not everybody knows that and, and, and so on. So tell me a little about your, your life, <laughs> that part of your life. All right. A very interesting, other interesting part of my life is I, w I went from this exhibition to Bishop Ansi High School. Mm -hmm. Got myself into trouble in Bishop Ansi. Uh, and I was transferred to St. Joseph's Convent, Port of Spain. They couldn't, I suppose Whoa. they couldn't um, send me on the street. So mm -hmm. I went to St. Joseph's Convent. And I all, I'm always grateful to Sister Francis Xavier, mm -hmm. who took me into Port of Spain. And I did my, what would have been O-levels, from St. Joseph's Convent, Port of Spain. Mm -hmm. And then, because I didn't get the results that Frances Xavier thought I should have got, and by which time she was in San Fernando, mm -hmm. and my father was living in Point Fortin, mm -hmm. and I, me and my mother fell out, so I went to live with him in Point Fortin and went to school and did my A-levels mm -hmm. in St. Joseph Convent, San Fernando. Whoa. So I'm the only person in Trinidad who's been to Bishop's <laughs> Port of Spain, Convent, Port of Spain, and that it is amazing. They mm. talk about the old boys network. Mm. The gold girls network works very well, thank you. 
<laughs> because I have colleagues from bishops and both convents, Port of Spain and San Fernando, uh, which has worked for me in a yes. lot of other ways. Because one of the things I want to say is that what I am and what I have done has mainly been because of my relationships with women. Mm -hmm. Even though, like I said, my, my, I started with my father and my grandfather. Mm -hmm. But mostly it has been women who have been looking out for me and helping me and supporting mm -hmm. me. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I went to work in the post, the post office. Mm -hmm. Six days after my 70th birthday, I joined the public service of Trinidad and Tobago in the post office and spent 17 years in the public mm -hmm. service. And married a young man who I worked with in the post office when I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So that by the time I was 24, I had three children. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a housewife living in Diamondville, planting my lawn grass and roses. <laughs> Um, because my activism really didn't start until I got into Diamondville, into a new community, and realized that if we were going to make this into the kind of community we wanted, there was things that had to, to be done. So we had a Diamondville Residents Association, of which I was a part. And what would happen is that when new residents came in, because there were about 500 households, houses that had been built, I would go and meet them and introduce them and say, this is how we want to organize ourselves in this new community and I think that is responsible for Diamondville being what it is mm -hmm. that we started off very early mm -hmm. setting the standards about how we would organize our community for the benefit of ourselves mm -hmm. and our children. So we were talking about your children and your so exactly how, uh, you have one boy? Yes I, my, uh, my first one is, is a girl and then my son mm -hmm. and then the third one who is Carla yes. Okay, so you have two girls and one boy. Well, up to that time, I up to that time I had the three. Yes, that's right, that's right. And then, then you, later we had, we had a fourth, the breastfeeding baby. Just before we go to to that, I'd I'd like to ask. You mentioned something about all these women who have helped um, shape your life, and you know a lot of people, like even my husband, remembers your mother. Yes. He says, "Boy, Mrs. Brown was something else. Right. Ma Brown was Ma, something yeah, else." Yes, right. So. Tell me something about these women who have influenced she, your life. My mother, your mother was, a, I always think, think of her as, compared to my father and grandfather, very conservative, right? Mm -hmm. Stay out of trouble, you know. But she was herself involved in community work, in, especially in campaigning for elections, which was the mm -hmm. other um, thing that I noticed. My mother also worked for a time with as a secretary of a friendly society, um, because that was the kind of mm -hmm. environment in which we, in which we grew mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But from from the political side, I don't think she was as um, mm -hmm. revolutionary as my father <laughs> and grandfather. <laughs> my grandfather was. The other thing about growing up in and I was growing up in East Dry River, and I was mm -hmm. born in Belgrade and Barcelona Street. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people the three most famous people from Belgrade and Barcelona Street was Geddes Granger, Dr. Rat, and I. <laughs> the three of us yes. were, were coexisting in that community. Wow, wow. <laughs> and were named in that community. All right. yes. But also we were living in a community where people, especially women, looked out for the children. Mm -hmm. right? So for example, people like Morris Marshall's mother. Mm -hmm. I had to go past her house and, 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 and she would take care of me and the craziness <laughs> that I would be doing. And other women along the street like her. I know I have to go past their house, so I better straighten up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have to deal with my mother when I get 